Last Sunday, we lit the first candle in our Advent wreath, the candle of hope. The second candle of Advent is the candle of peace. It is sometimes called the Bethlehem candle to remind us of the place in which preparations were made to receive and pray the Christ child. Peace is a gift that we must be prepared for. God uh, gives us the gift, gift of peace when we turn to him every day. The prophet Isaiah calls Christ the Prince of Peace. Though through John the Baptist and all the other prophets, God asks us to prepare our hearts so that he may come in. highway for our God. 
Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out! And I said, What shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms, and carry them in his bosom, and gently feed the mother sheep. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. Since all these things are to be dissolved in this way, what sort of people are you to be in leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and listening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved, and the elements will be no melt into fire. But in accordance with his promise, we wait for new heavens and a new earth, where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him at peace, without spot or blemish, and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. repent 
and God promises restoration to the nation. Forgiveness is not just letting Israel off the hook. It's an assurance of being healed. God's steadfastness and Israel's covenant commitment will be restored. Life in God will be hope-filled and centered in shalom, God's peace. It is in worshiping together that the community will find direction. And then we skip multiple generation to Peter's epistle. This letter is addressed to a community of people desperately in need of hope. How soon is soon, they want to know. Don't give up hope, is the response. God is faithful, and the parousia will come. It is the in-between time that is not even close to easy. Christians are called to live but that, to lives that are holy and faithful in their hope of a whole new creation. Expectation and watchfulness are our buzzwords. They can transform the world of now into the vision that God has given all of us for all of creation. If we took a toll today, a, a poll today, it is a good guess that an overwhelming majority of us would say in these times of pandemic, What's new about all this bad news that we're being bombarded with? And when, by the way, is soon? And yet more Advent centuries after the writing of all this scripture, we still wait. But there is waiting, and there is waiting. Some waiting is just that. The pointless exercise we have all had to endure from time to time. Like sitting in a doctor's office, just waiting for your name to be called so you can get your flu shot. Some waiting is expectant, like sitting in that same doctor's office, waiting to hear good test results. Some waiting feels empty and pointless, but other waiting is deeply significant and it really matters. Too often I think the kind of waiting we talk about in Advent seems like ticking moments off on the clock. Waiting to sing Christmas carols. Waiting to decorate the church. Waiting for Christmas generally. As if we're spoiled if we don't wait in just the right ritualistic way. But it is that kind of waiting that Advent invites us to somehow, isn't it? Mark's Gospel offers no birth narrative, no Christmas images. His Gospel challenges us with a statement, the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Mark has taken us right, right back to all the assurances that filled the writings of the prophet Isaiah at a time when Israel was desperate to hear prophecies of deliverance of renewal. John, says Mark, is a throwback to the Old Testament prophets. John is the one who will come crying out in the, in the wilderness, shouting about the need to prepare. It is the whole of Israel's promise of comfort, deliverance, and renewal that Mark is claiming happens in the ministry of the one sent from God, the one that John heralds. It is God who gives direction for preparing the way. It is God's own servants who make the preparations. John comes offering a baptism of repentance as a, meaning of, as a means of preparing. Then Mark, through John the Baptist, tells us that the time of promise is over and the time of fulfillment is at hand. The Messiah is in the world. The thing about promises is that they're not static. Not ever. Promises, if you hear them, and if you believe them, create an expectation about the future. They set something in motion. When you promise to call someone, that person anticipates your call. And when a friend promises you a ride home after a meeting, you don't make other arrangements. Why would you? 
You've got a promise. Promises create an expectation about the future, and that future expectation sets things in motion right here and right now in the present in order for us to prepare for what is to come. The very same is true about God's promises, but only in more so. And that perhaps is the key message of Advent. In the stable of Bethlehem, God is not only keeping promises made to Israel millennia ago, but God is making promises to us that in Jesus Christ, here, that in Jesus, God hears our own generation's fears, our concerns, and our doubts. When we are at our lowest points in faith and hope, God responds. That message is not easy for us to accept unconditionally. It is easy to fall into skepticism given the condition of this world. But consider this. What if God's promises are not all just something we are meant to walk idly, wait idly for until the end of time? What if we are invited to participate in them in the present moment? What if part of how God keeps God's promises is through our efforts to heal, to comfort, to help, and to bring justice to those in need? And that includes ourselves, right here, where we are, right now. Mark has something to say about that as well. Mark doesn't call his book the Good News or Gospel of Jesus. Instead, he titles it the beginning of the Good News, which means that everything Mark has to say about, about Jesus, that all the healing, the preaching, the teaching, the exorcism, and even Jesus' death and resurrection is only the beginning of what is to be. There is still more to come. Check the original conclusion of Mark's Gospel. It has what is referred to as an open ending, because it is, after all, just the beginning. The story isn't over. Put that together with Mark says in chapter 1, verse 8, and there you would discover what is for me the whole point of this Advent season. It's a statement of hope for the church and for each one of us. I have baptized you with water, but the Messiah will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. We are all invited to continue the story of the good news of Jesus as God continues to write that gospel in and through our lives, as individuals and as communities. We are called to move from a sacramental symbol of water and words to actively living the words of the baptismal covenant through the leading of the Holy Spirit. It's not just John who is called to cry out and prepare the way. It's all of us. Right here, right now, waiting actively by making a difference in the lives of people God has put all around us. God is continuing the story of the good news of Jesus in and through our words, our actions, and each of us will have 101 opportunities this week alone to contribute to that sacred story, to make it come alive help God keep God's promises here and now. No, what we, what we do do will not bring ultimate healing or comfort or peace or justice. That's God's job. And God will keep God's promises in the fullness of time. But we don't have to wait passively. There is nothing stopping us from throwing ourselves into that venture while trusting God's promises and living them right now, right here, except for our own reluctance to do anything of the sort. If we want God's shalom to be reality for all of God's creation, that says, Mark, do your part to make it so. This is the kind of active, 
involve participatory awaiting that Advent invites us to. And why not get started now? It's not complicated. Remember in theologian John Wesley's rules this week. Do all you can, by all the means you can, in all the places you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can, for as long as you can. Thanks be to God for the gifts we are given to make us so. Amen. <clears throat> I invite you to stand for the three of us. Let us confess the faith of our baptism as we say. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born in the Virgin Mary. He was suffered in Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to death. On the third day he rose again. He has ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, Father, we pray today for your church around the world, all those who love you and serve you. Help us to be aware we are all brothers, all those and sisters, all those of us on earth. Help us to find our peace in serving and loving others. Help us always to do your will and to be as Christ to those in our community. Heavenly Father, we pray for the leadership of the Anglican Church, for our climate, Linda, our Metropolitan Anne, our bishops, Andrew and Priscilla, our interim priest, Canon Gloria, our assistant, Canon Greg, and our youth leader, Dan. And we pray for your church here in Lindsay, that it may serve you and serve the community and that we may worship you in spirit and truth. In the Toronto Diocese cycle of prayer, we pray for Project Plowshares, the Peace Institute of the Canadian Council of Churches. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Reformed Episcopal Church of Spain. Heavenly Father, we pray for all those we know who are sick in need or distress for Ron, Paul, Robin, Bobby, David, Richard, Barb, Susan, Joe, Holly, John, Shirley, Diana, Mark, Barry, Marissa, Helena, Tanya, for Linda and Alan, Gareth, Alan, Eleanor, Tammy, Patty Ann, Nicole, Jackson, Patricia, Grant, Ross, 
Bill, Heather, and Father, those whose names have been in our minds and on our hearts throughout this week, we bring to you now. Father, bless them, may they know your presence and your strength in their time of need. We pray for our children, that they may find their needs met in this difficult time of the pandemic. We pray especially for children with special needs, children like Lincoln and Nate. We pray for all those who served others, either in their homes, in the emergency measure services, in our hospitals, in our schools, in the fire and ambulance services. We pray for our armed forces at home and abroad. We pray for all those who mourn at this time, because it is a lonesome time when it is hard to give comfort. Heavenly Father, help us always to serve you and to be your hands and feet and voice in our community. In joyful expectation, let us pray to our Savior and Redeemer, saying, Lord Jesus, come soon. O wisdom from the mount of the Most High, you reign over all things to the ends of the earth. Come and show us how you live. O Lord and head of the house of Israel, you appeared to Moses in the fire of the burning bush, and you gave the law on Mount Sinai. Come with outstretched arm and ransom us. O branch of Jesse, standing as a sign among the nations, all kings will keep silence before you and all people will summon you to their aid. Come, set us free, and we may no more. O he of David, and scepter of the house of Israel, you open, and none can shut. You shut, and none can open. Come and free the captives from prison. O morning star, Splendor of the light eternal and bright sun of righteousness. Come and enlighten all who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death. O King of, na of the nations, you alone can fulfill the des their desires. Cornerstone, you make opposing nations one. Come and save the creature you fashioned from clay. Lord, Lord Jesus, come O Emmanuel, hope of the nations and their Savior, come and save us, Lord our God. Lord, Lord Jesus, come Jesus, come Let us hope, humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty God, the Lord of our Lord Jesus Christ, Maker of all things and judge of all people, we acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, the truth we turn out to crime and the truth we have admitted, by the law, word, and deed, against our divine majesty. We do earnestly repent, and are heartily sorry for the sins of our feelings. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for the Lord thy Son, our Lord, will Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us of all the days of past, and grant that we may enter the right after, serving the need to be in the ministry of life. In the honor of the Lord, we are not mighty. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. I invite you to stand. My brothers and sisters in Christ, may the peace of the Lord be always with you.
the offertory hymns, When the King Shall Come Again. Father, 
who of thy tender mercy does give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him, and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself one ounce of one's offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. It is to two. And in his holy gospel, command us to continue a perpetual memorial of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O most merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant thee that we receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. When the same night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, we, thy humble servants, of thou thy holy church, remembering the precious death of thy beloved Son, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again in glory, to make before thee, in this sacrament of the holy bread and of eternal, a bread of eternal life, and the cup of everlasting salvation, the memorial which he hath commanded. We praise thee, we bless thee, we thank thee, and we pray to you, O Lord of our God. And we entirely desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. We'll humbly beseech thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all that at thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. We pray that by the power of thy Holy Spirit, all of us who are partakers of this holy communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Holy. Holy, 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 Lord, Lord of all the hosts, and heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord, most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord, O Santa in the heart. Let us pray as our sacred topic. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy holy come.
us pray together. Thankful God, we thank you for feeding us with this heavenly banquet. That was all we hear the promise call to turn our hearts to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. Glory to God, who is power of working in us to do the infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in your Christ Jesus forever and ever. May the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen. Our closing hymn is Immortal Invisible. 